food babe, science babe. Let's do this. So someone on my plant-based cyclist Facebook page wrote me a message and said, have you looked at this article yet? Have you seen this article where this woman nicknamed Science Babe, this Yvette de Entremont, wrote an article basically calling out Food Babe? And I said, no, I haven't. Send me the link. She sent me the link, read the article. Wow. Um, a little bit shocking. Um, brought up some good points. And it made me want to dig a little bit deeper into who Science Babe was. Um, I had heard of Food Babe before this. Didn't really follow her. Don't follow her at all. So, <clears throat> in summary, Food Babe is, um, let's say, a food investigator and um, gives people recommendations on this and that and calls out major companies and says, you need to make a change, and Science Babe is the antithesis of Food Babe, literally the antithesis of Food Babe, um, basically came up with her um, Facebook site to call out Food Babe. If you haven't read that article, I would recommend pausing the movie right here, taking five or ten minutes to read it, because it would give you a better sense of what I'm going to be talking about in this movie. Cons of... Uh, the article by Yvette de Entremont. She has a little bit of a conflict of interest. She made her Facebook site just to call out Food Babe. That's it. So that's a conflict of interest. Not a major point, but a minor point. Number two, emotional language. Uh, Miss de Entremont is using uh, emotional language to possibly sway our opinion. Language like, Food Babe is full of shit and it's a goddamn stretch to say that sugar has deleterious effects. The way I read that, it, you know, it kind of, it didn't really help her cause at all. Um, I am not one to be swayed by emotion and emotional language, and you shouldn't be either. You shouldn't be swayed by emotional language. You shouldn't be swayed on, by attacks on other people. Um, you should be swayed by evidence. Number three, Miss Yvette's motivation to launch her Facebook page was to save the reputation of a pumpkin spice latte. And essentially, if you read the article, in a nutshell, Food Babe um, took the pumpkin spice latte at, at Starbucks and says, you have this caramel coloring and it's bad for us. And this Miss Yvette, who wrote the article, um, saw that and that was her motivation to start the Facebook page. I just think that's a little bit shallow um, t to me. Um, and it's, it's a little, she's attaching, an emo she has an emotional attachment to a pumpkin spice latte. Pros of the article written by Yvette. Uh, I believe she's well-intentioned. She wants people to hear the other side and she gives scientific evidence. I like that. Number two, she makes some very good points in the article. Like, for example, she brought up a Facebook group that uh, is called Banned by Food Babe. I looked it up, and it's out there. And in the article, it has a clip where there's 6,000 plus members. I just looked it up today. There's 7,800 members of Banned by Food Babe. Uh, reasons for being banned include, I asked her for her qualifications. That's a good question. Uh, I'm sure if you emailed any of the doctors who I will recommend in the bottom line section, if you emailed any of them and said, what are your qualifications, I'm sure they would have no problem giving you their qualifications. Some members of her page were former fans of hers who were banned when they asked questions of clarification. That's a good point. If I were teaching my classroom of students on nutrition and someone raised their hand and said, hey, could you clarify this for me? I wouldn't send them out of the room. I wouldn't give them detention. I would clarify for them. So, I don't have any more details than this. This is what was written in the article. But if this is true, this is a bad sign. This is a red flag. Clarification is good. It's a good thing. Pro. Another pro. If her arguments... This is a quote from Yvonne's um, article. If her arguments had merit, she could engage in a battle of wits with her detractors instead of making insidious accusations or instead of banning them. 
I don't mind when people of opposing views come forward and say, hey, I don't believe in what you believe and here's why. I like that. Discussion is good. It leads to learning. Disagreements don't have to be bad. Uh, I, I, I don't want to create an insulated environment around my beliefs and, and just put my fingers in my ears and say la 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 and don't hear what anyone else has to say. If I go through life with the same ideas without changing them, I mean, that's the definition of ignorance. I'd want to put my ideas through the gauntlet of public discourse and, and discussion and public response and see how they come out on the other side. And if, if anyone wants their ideas to hold weight, that's what you would do instead of banning people who simply disagree with you or who want to discuss things with you. Another pro to Yvonne's article, she makes a good point that coffee is in the same carcinogenic chemical category as caramel coloring. I don't know that much about it, but she's the toxicologist and the chemist, not me. Uh, that's a good point. <laughs> so if you're going to make such a big deal about the caramel coloring, well, how about make a big deal about the coffee, the caffeine, and the coffee itself? Same carcinogenic chemical, chemical category. Um, and the last pro that I have to Yvonne's article, just because you can't pronounce something doesn't necessarily mean that it's bad for you. Excuse me, this is an argument of ignorance or an argument of incredulity. Is that just because I have no idea how to explain it, that must mean it can't be true or, or uh, it's, it's bad for us. Um, this argument is commonly used in discussions with uh, religion where let's say someone in religion says, well, there's no way that I can explain the Big Bang, it's so complex, therefore it never happened. That's not a logical argument. That's, that's, that you can't use that argument. So with here, just because I can't pronounce it means I shouldn't eat it. You need to give more advice, more, more, um, you need to give more description than that, more evidence than that. So now I'm gonna get into the food babe pros and cons. Food Babe Pro, from the research I've done, very briefly, I do believe she's in this for the right reasons. She's an activist. She wants people to be healthier. She's out on the front lines getting her hands dirty. That's very admirable. Food Babe Con, I think she's also in this for the wrong reasons, too. Um, she's in this to make money. She's selling a lot of products on her website. And although they're not directly her products, this is a business for her. And that's not always the best way to go about spreading information. Another food babe con is food babe. <laughs> this is a little separate from nutrition, but still a very important topic. I made a movie about this a couple months ago about um, vaccines, anti-vaxxers. She says no to the flu shot. This whole article, I feel it's a huge article and I'll post it, I feel like she doesn't really understand the reasons why we get a flu shot every year. She says no to the flu shot, oh, just get the flu shot and have your immune system tackle it. Well, the flu in this article by Yvonne also, she claims it kills tens of thousands of people a year. I get the flu shot every year, I'm not that concerned with what's in a flu shot. So I really hope she's not anti-vaccine. Food babe, another con number three. People are dumb and will believe almost anything people have to say if they say it with enough conviction. Food babe is good looking, she's articulate, and she says things with conviction, and she is on the front lines and an activist and, and, and is doing the dirty work. So people take her word for it. And that's a fallacy of not food bay, but of people. They need to be more, they need to think more critically and not just take things at face value. Food babe con number four. Um, whether it's organic or not, pump, uh, dairy is more harmful than helpful. Period. Getting to the bottom line. Bottom line. Think for yourself. Is pumpkin a health food? Is a pumpkin spice latte a health food? <laughs> For those of you who want to avoid added chemicals, don't drink a pumpkin spice latte. Do I think they're healthy? Absolutely not. Uh, not a health food. Not a health food at all. At best, at best, 
and this is something Yvonne said as well, at best they can be considered a treat. All right, once in a blue moon. Uh, you know, I don't need a Google University degree or degrees in toxicology or chemistry to think critically about a product at face value and ask, do I need this? And is it health food? Is it going to help my body or hurt my body? Right? Bottom line number two, kind of got into it with the first one. If you don't like food additives, don't eat them. Stick to whole plant foods. Bottom line number three, I feel like Food Babe is barking up the wrong tree. She, doing a little research on her site, she's gotten into, um, we'll say, arguments, discussions with uh, Kraft Food, Chick-fil-A, Anheuser-Busch, Panera Bread, Starbucks, Subway, to name a few. I feel like even if, let's take the Subway example. Um, you might have heard that the Subway bread has an ingredient in it that's also in yoga mats. Okay. I don't really know much about this ingredient, but even if we took that ingredient out, which I believe they did, and say, here's your bread without that a yoga mat ingredient, it doesn't make it health food. It's not healthy. You can put anything into that, and it wouldn't make it any healthier. Hey guys, sorry about the quick transition. I wanted to make a little bit more content for this video. There's another example in another graphic on Food Babe's website that I will include in this presentation about how the differences between food in the U.S. and food in the U.K. And the one example she gives is there's a hundred there's 151 percent more sugar in a pepperoni lover's pizza in the U.S. than there is in the U.K. Don't eat pepperoni lover's pizza. Even if you took out that 151 percent more sugar, it absolutely would not make the pizza healthier. Or, or a health food. See what I mean? Uh, Krispy Kreme. The, the donuts in the UK are bigger donuts with less sugar. 52% more sugar than... 52% uh, um, more sugar in the Krispy Kreme donuts in the US. It doesn't make it health food. These differences, they don't matter. They're not, it's, they're not healthy either way. So my last bottom line is this. I'm not going to take food or nutrition advice from Food Babe, even though she's well-intentioned, and I'm not going to take food or nutrition advice from Science Babe either. I'm going to trust the doctors like Dr. Esselstyn, Dr. Campbell, Dr. Bernard, Dr. Hyman, Dr. Uh, Garth Davis. I'll post, I'll post all of them and their Facebook pages down below in the description. Those are the doctors that I'm going to be following because they've devoted their life to making other people healthy.